All right, we're going to do a pre-startup check on this 1970 MD500C model. Uh, let's go go inside and check it out. All right, so getting in, um, the easiest thing to do is get get up in there and then swing both legs over or one leg over. So up here, kind of get in here, swing those legs on over. Just like getting in a car, first things first, get your seat belts on. You wanna hold that. We're gonna give it a nice, get it nice and snug. We're gonna um, get these pebbles ready for use. So first things first, like my sandals here, take the cotter pin out, apply pressure. Don't have your sandals in the video. Take <laughs> apply pressure to your <laughs> apply pressure to your right foot, your right pedal. Take it off, spin the pedal around and reapply the cotter pin. Now you're ready to go. We've just uh, adjusted the pedals. We're going to check for full range of motion and all of our controls. So I like to do the pedals first. Go full left and right. You're going to feel for any binding. Visually check to the tail rotor, see what's going on. So first things first, we're going to take, we're going to roll the collective friction off that's away from you. We're going to take our cyclic friction off. There's two frictions for the cyclic, one for lateral movement and one other one for vertical movement. Back and forth. That's all the way off. This is all the way off. The collector is really hard to raise, so unlike the Robinson where you can just pull it up and down, this one's going to be hard and then it's going to spring up. So it may seem tough. In fact, <laughs> it'll come all the way up. As you can tell, it changed my whole swash plate. So collectors all the way up. We're going to check full range of motion in the cyclic. So left, right, backwards, and forwards. It's kind of ratchety. That's just the way this, this head is designed. So everything's back to neutral. Collectors goes down. Frictions come back on. So roll the frictions back on. Cyclic friction turns back on. There's two on the cyclic once again. All the way down. All the way down. All right. We're inside. Pedals are centered. Come down here to your collective. Make sure your landing light's off. That's this big toggle switch right here. That's off. All right, the rotor brake in the MD500 is located right above the right shoulder of the pilot. Just to operate a lever you can pull down, then you just pull all the way down and crank it until um, the blades are about to stop. You put it back up, ni nice and secured. Back here at the panel, look up right in the center of the aircraft, you're going to see two levers. You're going to have your cabin heat and then your anti engine anti-ice. You have two levers here, one for your cabin heat right there and one for your engine and ice. Now what's going to happen, um, say you're flying along, you need your ice on, you need your heater on, it's really cold out. You want to make sure all your bleed air devices are turned off, otherwise it's going to really encourage a hot start. So slide that back, so that's your cabin air, or heat, cabin heat right there. This is your engine anti-ice. Goes off. We're going to check the heading on the magnetic compass here, make sure there's fluid, make sure it's operating correctly since that is uh, one of the pieces of equipment that is required for day or night VFR. Um, so make sure that is operating correctly. So coming down from the compass, we're going to check the static positions of all these instruments. You don't want to introduce power until you can see exactly where these gauges are sitting even without power. So airspeed's good. Coming across, you can set our altimeter to field elevation here at Gatlinburg, which is a thousand feet. Coming on down, torque's looking good. DG's turned off. VSI is right at zero, maybe a little, little above. Coming on down, here's our ILS indicator for doing instrument, um, instrument training. Notice the error in this torque gauge. Okay, it's already indicating about two psi, so that's going to be. Uh, that's going to affect your uh, your maximum torque. You could be at 70%, but really it's at 68%, so that might actually give you some more power. Notice your TOT gauge is at zero. Your N1's at zero. 
your oil pressure is slightly above zero. You see your uh, your amperage, your oil temperature, your fuel. It's all pegged down. Coming up from the bottom of our instrument panel is our breaker panel. Notice all the breakers are in that need to be in. Here's your fresh air vent. That's closed right now. It's winter time, so that's closed. Coming directly across is your fuel shutoff valve. We want fuel for starting it, obviously, so push that in. Um, the only time that should be pulled out is if you have a fire or some other uh, non-planned event. To turn this thing off, you do not pull the fuel valve like the Robinson. Much, much different. All right, let's introduce some power. We're going to be starting this thing off the battery. If we had an APU and an auxiliary power unit, we'd flip this thing down. But we don't, so flip it up. We're going to run off the battery. So we're going to turn our strobe light on. Notice our power, oil temperature. We have about 250 pounds of fuel. All the other gauges are still looking good. VSI. Notice, engine out, oil temperature, oil transmission light. Generator out, oil chip, fuel uh, fuel low light, and fuel filter. Now to test the other, these three other lights, come down here, right by your fuel shutoff valve. Push this little button, this guy. Press to test. You're going to press it. It's going to light them all up, keeps them all constant. Let go, and it assumes that you have an engine out. Alright, so we've turned power on, we've turned our rotating beacon on, our strobe light. Now we want to make sure this thing has our engine out warning system. So obviously it's, our, it's already flashing an engine out light, but you're flying along during the daytime, it may be hard to see. So come down here. Now it says generator off and then generator. The starter is also your generator. So in order to start this thing, it cannot be generating power. So if it's not generating power, it assumes that the aircraft is flying. So it's off right now. Flip it on. Make sure that horn's working properly. Flip it back off. To save our power, I'm just going to go ahead and turn the, the battery off strobe light off. Alright, so you're coming down on the collective. Before we push the starter button, we want to make sure there's no fuel um, being allowed in the in the turbine, in the burner can. So, push up on the lockout. Make sure it's closed and double check it. Fuel is all the way shut off. We're going to check our trim knob here. Push it forward, back, left and right, and listen for the motors. They work. That's always a good thing to hear. Coming down here, it's not required for the start. Listen to for the starter pump. Make sure that works. It works. Turn it off. Beacon's off. Battery's off. When we start this thing, we want to make sure all unnecessary devices are turned off to give the uh, starter as much power as it need be. This is our avionics master. Down is off. Up is on. That would turn our transponder and all of our other radios on. So we want to make sure this is turned off for the start.